Hello, everybody, and welcome at Salem United Methodist Church. It's wonderful to have you here in worship with us this morning, Mother's Day. It's wonderful to have the opportunity to remember or celebrate our mothers, celebrate their memory, and listen and remember what they've been or are for us. And so this service will be a special service, a little unusual only compared to the uh, regular service, we'll hear uh, special music and uh, some stories about uh, mothers. And so there's an invitation for all of us to actually keep close to our own memory of our mothers and uh, celebrate the mothers that are still with us. Uh, I would like also to remind everybody that uh, as of next Sunday, uh, the May 16, we will uh, come back at church and we'll be finally back in person. Uh, I'm gonna ask you to please call the office or email the office, uh, and you can find both phone numbers as well as email address on our website, uh, Salem on the Hill. And uh, uh, we will be uh, so happy to welcome you back in person here. So as we enter into this worship, uh, I like to uh, light uh, uh, Christ's candle as we let the Spirit of God come among us. Today, we are giving thanks to God for the gift of mothers and the mother-like nurture that many people show to others in their lives. Isaiah wrote that God is a mother to us, comforting and carrying us in her arms. As a mother comforts her child, so will I comfort you. Loving Lord, thank you for your tender care. Isaiah also wrote that God would never forget us. He knows each of us like a mother knows her own children. Can a mother forget the baby at her breast and have no compassion on the child she has born? Though she may forget, I will not forget you. Loving Lord, thank you for your tender care. David wrote that in God's presence, he was quiet and at peace, trusting his mother God like a child safe in loving arms. But I have stilled and quieted my soul like a weaned child with its mother, like a weaned child is my soul within me. Loving Lord, thank you for your tender care. 
Jesus spoke of himself as a mother, longing to wrap his arms around us, like a mother hen gathers her chicks under her wings. O Jerusalem, Jerusalem, how often I have longed to gather your children together, as a hen gathers her chicks under her wings, but you were not willing. Loving Lord, thank you for your tender care. Paul writes about his missionary ministry and likens his work to that of a nurse who looks after those in her care. But we were gentle among you, like a mother caring for her little children. Loving Lord, thank you for your tender care. At this time, uh, I'd like to invite you to join me in a time of uh, prayer. And we're going to start by uh, taking uh, a few moments of uh, silence so that each of us can lift up uh, our own names, our own situations that are in our heart and our own burdens. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, in this day as we uh, lift up uh, love, especially sacrificial love of mothers, but all the mother's figures in our lives, we ask you to uh, transform our, our hearts and teach us how uh, to love in ways that may be hard at times. Help us to uh, 
love uh, giving life to others, even if that could be a sacrificial kind of action. We learn from you, gracious God, how uh, you gave your life so that we can receive life. And that is a model of love for us. So please bring to us that model of love. And today we lift up to you all those names and the situations that are having in our hearts, people that we worry about it, people who are sick, people who are depressed, people who are lonely, people who are overwhelmed with the anger and resentment. And we ask you to flood all of us with your love and your forgiveness and your healing power. And we ask you, gracious God, to use all of us as instruments of your love. Heavenly Father, help us to transform one person at a time, beginning with ourselves. Transform this world and make it a place where everybody can feel accepted and loved, where everybody can learn to be loved so that they can, in return, love others. We ask you all of this in the name of uh, our Lord Jesus Christ, uh, who uh, went on the cross for us because of love. And because of love, we gave, gave to all of us salvation. Amen. Thank you.
If I speak in the tongues of men or of angels, but do not love, I am only a resounding gong or a clanging cymbal. If I have the gift of prophecy and can fathom all mysteries and all knowledge, and I, if I have faith that can move mountains, but do not have love, I am nothing. If I give all I possess to the poor and give over my body to hardship that I may boast, but do not have love, I am nothing. Love is patient, love is kind. If it does not envy, if it does not boast, it is not proud. It does not dishonor others, it is not self-seeking, it is not easily angered, it keeps no record of wrongs. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. It always protects, always trusts, always hopes, always perseveres. Love never fails, but where there are prophecies, they will cease. Where there are tongues, they will be stilled. Where there is knowledge, it will pass away. For we know in part, and we prophesy in part. But when completeness comes, what is in part disappears. When I was a child, I talked like a child. I thought like a child, reasoned like a child. When I became an adult, put the ways of childhood behind me. For now we only see a reflection as in a mirror. Then we shall see face to face, now I know in part, then I shall truly know fully, even as I am fully known. And now these three remain, faith, hope, and love. But the greatest of these is love. When I was asked to speak of my mother, I thought of so many stories. You know, my mother was a saint. Her and I had kind of had a love-hate relationship at different times. I do live with some regrets on our relationship, but I know now that, of course, I'm forgiven. She taught me so many things. Some things I choose not to ever do again, like cutting up a chicken. She had certain phrases that are still serving me well through life. Push your pencil. Well, the translation of that is when confronted with a problem or a circumstance, you push your pencil. You do the math to see if you can afford it. You make a chart to see if the project's feasible. You just draw a map or lay out a plan. That was pushing your pencil. Eat what you're served. There are hungry children. Let's be a good member of the Clean Plate Society. None of us were very picky eaters because, you know, we were farm kids and we ate what we were served. But I had one exception, and that was the beef tongue. Can't get anywhere in this world on seas. She was a taskmaster and saw that all six of us kids were either on the honor row or staying on the honor row. Some needed more tutoring than others. Mostly, we were afraid not to get good grades. She really didn't have much of an education, but she was determined that we would have one. And that meant college, and all six of us did go to college. I can't wait to see your, what your house looks like when you grow up. She would say this when we were cleaning house and we weren't very good helpers. I do regret not being more of help for her because she had to work so hard. My house today, well, it's kind of spotty. It was kind of like when I was a kid. But little did I know then she could tell the future. She was the most resourceful person. She had 
was an outstanding stage mother. We were in plays and church programs. She once made a donkey for a Christmas play. She made a world out of paper mache for a float. She turned my father's old furry hat into a Viking hat, complete with horns for Halloween. She replaced my doll, Chatty Kathy's teeth with plaster Paris after my brother had knocked them out. Her button jars were full of surprises. Her love for my father and his children was what she lived for. She would always push us up front. No one can see you in the back. Step up and be proud. Throw those shoulders back and hold that head up high. To this day, I sometimes feel her loving push to get me in front of the group. When my mother and father met, it was post-World War II. They knew each other for about six months, and then they ran off and got married. He established, after their marriage and they wanted to start a family, that the family would be raised within the church. My mother was not of faith when they married. She had had a very difficult childhood, and a church was never anything that she had been inside. She followed my father's lead and became a Christian, and she vowed to raise her family in the church. My baby book says that I had started attending our little home church three weeks after birth. She kept her vow. Whenever the doors were open, the six kids were there and the two parents, so we'd fill a pew. Even her funeral was in our church. I hope these stories may give you a glimpse into my childhood that I thought was full of love or ignite some of your own thoughts. I miss you, Mom and Dad. Yes, I'm being good. Yes, I'm being good to Ken. Someday I'll join you, and what rejoicing there will be. Amen. All right, I've been asked to say a few words about my mother. That's, I think, like everybody, you could say volumes about your mother. 
I can tell you that my mother was one of the most beautiful people, both inside and out, that uh, many people have ever met. In fact, when I asked my sisters if they wanted to contribute a little memory or two uh, to help me out here, uh, they both said she had wonderful skin. <laughs> and actually, that's what my daughter said as well. So, and that's true, actually. I didn't inherit it. I've got a lot of wrinkles. But uh, that's not etched on her urn. Maybe it should be. But she uh, had a wonderful smile and a wonderful sense of humor. She was a perfect pastor's wife. She belonged to all the committees. She showed up in a happy and cheerful giver. Uh, we had people coming to our house, uh, and which she would grab grocery bags full of groceries from our refrigerator. But those who knew my mother's best knew that beyond, behind her smile, um, there was a wry and dry sense of humor, um, a little bit of irony, perhaps, uh, a little quick double entendre and a little sarcasm that often went beyond most people. Uh, she and I used to share little wry looks to each other, you know, at my dad's expense sometimes, and, <laughs> and share a chuckle. But above and beyond that, she had a, a jovial, um, almost vaudeville sense of humor that not many people got to see. I remember at times when she would uh, rock me and sing silly songs, rock me on her lap. Now, it's not really unusual for mothers, except she did it until I was well into my late 50s. So I appreciated that type of sense of humor. The story, since I've had to come up with a story that I remember, is one trip to the south. My parents are both from Louisiana, and they made frequent visits. And they would bring back souvenirs, of course, you know, sometimes a cotton bush with permission from the farmer, and different things that reminded them of Louisiana. Um, one time, they brought back a large bag of Spanish moss. My dad was always fond of that on the oak trees. So they put it out on a picnic bench uh, right near the, a lake that they were visiting near a bio. So my mother, uh, much to my aunt and uncle's delight, took a large handful of Spanish moss and put it like a wild witch's hair all over the place and started doing a little dance around. And my aunt and uncle had never seen her like that. and They got a huge kick out of that. But what my mother didn't know is that it was not the bag Spanish moss. It was actually Spanish moss from a tree nearby on the bayou. And if you've ever dealt with Spanish moss, you'll know it's full of all sorts and species of bugs. <laughs> and worst of all, pardon me, worst of all, it's full of chiggers, if you know what that is, little red bugs, little ticks. So my mother's dance started out friendly enough, but all at once it became frantic as the bugs started going down her shirt. <laughs> and as little poor little ch the chiggers were like making little burn bite marks on her head. Oh boy, goodness. Uh, that was something that uh, we remembered as a family for some time to come. I still have the pictures before she did her. <laughs> They're still pictures, so we couldn't see her wild dance. But my mother and my father um, helped us grow up in a, 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 a a household full of laughter and humor, and I hope I pass that on to my children. But my mother was a very warm, affectionate, and funny person, and I miss her every day.
Hi everybody, I'm Karen Adair, and this is my mom, Rena. You all know my mom, Rena. Pastor asked me today to speak about what my mother taught me um, as part of her Mother's Day situation. Uh, first, I'd like to talk actually about my grandma, because before I had a really good relationship with my mom, I had a really great relationship with my grandma. She taught me that I was valuable. Even if I was a kid, I was still valuable. My opinion counted, my hard work counted, and she loved me no matter what. And now I'd like to tell you about my mom. My mom taught me that you don't have to be fancy. You just have to be who you are. And that's the most important thing. You have to be trustworthy and you have to be friendly and helpful. My mom teaches me every day that we need patience. And trust me, I still haven't learned enough patience, but I'm getting there. So on this Mother's Day, whether your mom's here or not, whether you lost her a long time ago, or you're still blessed to have her, think about your mom and how much you love her and what she did for you as a person. And as we uh, come toward the end of our service, uh, I'd like to uh, take a time to prayer, to pray for our mothers and those spiritual mothers be nurturing us through all our lives, and they still do. Let us pray together. Gracious God, we ask you to uh, bless all the mothers and all the spiritual mothers, uh, all those uh, women that in so many different ways have been nurturing us and nurturing our children and nurturing uh, people that we know. We ask you to bless them, recognizing that not every day it's easy to uh, love in a sacrificial way. And so today we also lift up uh, all those mothers who are overwhelmed by motherhood. We lift up in a special way all the mothers who are single, single parent and they are raising their children by themselves. We pray for those mothers who are working and trying to fulfill parenting at the same time. Please be with them, gracious God, in a time where they feel overwhelmed with their task. Today also we pray for the mothers who lost their children, a pain and a grief that nothing and nobody can lift up. We pray for the adopted mothers. We pray for all those women who are desiring and wishing to become mothers and their wish didn't come through. We pray for all those mothers that have children serving as military personnel somewhere in the world, away, and there are time overwhelmed with the concern and worries. We pray for the mothers who are caring for kids who are sick. We're praying for those mothers who are sick and they can struggle to be able to uh, care for their children. Gracious God, we also pray for all those mothers who are not here with us anymore. And we pray in a special way for those people who are uh, for whom today is especially difficult days as their memory of their mother who are gone and becomes uh, so painful at time. Please hold them and keep them. And we ask your gracious God to uh, also be with uh, all of us as we learn to uh, today to remember our mothers who are gone and keep listening and caring for the mothers who are here. 
and help us to learn from them what is the best way of living and loving and nurturing others. Bless them all, gracious God. In your name we pray. Amen. And at this time, uh, uh, as part of our service, uh, we are called to uh, keep loving in a sacrificial way by uh, giving a gift uh, toward the ministry of, of Salem United Methodist Church that allowed us to uh, share in God's love with others. So if you are feel called to give, uh, uh, please put your donation in an envelope and send it to uh, the uh, address that you see on the screen. And God will bless you through this donation. And as we prepare to leave this time of worship, may our God, who comes to us also as a mother, bless you all. And may the Spirit of God be with you now and forever. Amen. <laughs>